Hello and welcome to Sylvan Mist Designs. I have today a plain white card that is 15 by 10. I purchased a set of 30 cards and envelopes, but you can use folded cardstock. No need to purchase these. I'm going to be using Apple Barrel's Fruit Punch Pink, this tropical orange, and Decolor Coral Blush for my three base colors. The heart that I've drawn is eight centimeters by eight centimeters. Now for the initial dot, I'm gonna start with a size eight. Next, if you happen to have the same tools, I'm pulling out the E4. This is the one with the flat head that creates oval dots. If you don't have this tool, try small swooshes or painted lines if you want to duplicate this. I am going to lay down six of these ovals here in pink. As you see, I am placing these at the four compass points. Now I'm gonna add four more in between these. Next is the 1.5. Here, I'm gonna do a set of two walk dots in between each of the E4 ovals in this coral color. to a 4.5. Place a dot again on the four compass points. Now add two dots in between each of these. Two dots should fit nice and even between these two, provided you're using the same tool or size. If they don't, don't worry, either adjust up or down with the available tools you have. However, your tool over the design Hover your tool over the design to help you get an idea what's gonna fit. And keep in mind, smaller is better than larger. And because if you now have a gap, all you'll need to do is repeat what we did below with the ovals and place one or two dots in between. Picking up the 1.5 again, we are just rotating through these three colors. This is going to be a little dot for the landing on top of the four compass points. For this one here, it's going to sit in the crook of the two dots versus putting it directly on top of the one in the prior row. The point of these is to give a little bit of extra space for our upcoming walked dot rows. Moving over to a five. Place a dot on top of the landing dots that you've just made.
Now onto a 2.5. Place a dot on top of each of these prior ones. Now using a 1.5 millimeter, we're gonna be going back into the same color to walk them. Ideally, you should be able to fit about five dots along each side. For the sake of time, I'm gonna speed this part up. Feel free to pause the video here until you've completed the walk dots on all eight points. Now to change it up a bit, let's go back to the E4. I'm gonna place one of these ovals on top of the eight points. Moving on to a 2.0 for the next set of walk dots, you should be able to get about seven dots here. Now let me pause here a second. These tools are less and less effective at walking dots the larger the size. Although we want to get seven dots in, some of these I'm only gonna place four and watch what happens when this set is complete. Again, in the interest of time, I'm gonna speed this part up. See you back in a bit. So now we have most of these with only four walk dots versus seven. So now take your one and we are going to make the other three walk dots. I'll speed this up, be back shortly. The next tool is the 5.5. We're gonna do some swooshes here. Now lay this dot between your petals, slightly above the level of the oval. 
Now I have lines for my compass at this level, so I'm gonna follow this. You may or may not have them based on how you laid out your heart and or if you used a template grid. But to do the swoosh, I use the smallest nail art tool. Grab paint from the center of the dot and drag it straight down between the petals. Then pull paint from the midpoint of the dot on its left and right side down towards the tip. Use a tool like a pencil and gently move the paint around and create this teardrop shape. And continue this all the way around. Now that those are done, I'm going to move down to a 4.5. To do the next set of swooshes, place this dot in the gap between the oval and the swoosh. With your other tool, create a swoosh. My suggestion is to start on the side here and not in the middle. Move the paint along the edge of the walk dots and the edge of the swoosh and then fill in the center. It's really like coloring. And again, continue this all the way around. Once completed, I'm gonna move up to a six. We are gonna do some more swooshes, but careful, these will not all be the same. These are gonna go directly above the oval of the petals on the row above the swooshes that we have just completed. As you see here, I have guidelines marked and you may not, regardless, start on the bottom. Bring the bottom tip of your swoosh down to meet the oval. Now do the top corners, the north, east, and northwest sides of the compass.
Okay, now you won't have the same amount of room on the sides. Place your dot up against the outside edge of the heart shape for the east and west sides of the compass. Simply make a shorter swoosh here. Now I'm going to go back to the E4. Place an oval on the top of the larger swoosh. I am going to use the 1.5 now to place a dot on either side of this oval. Now I'm going to switch to the one to finish the walk dots just on the top curve of the swoosh. Now, since the swooshes in the southwest and southeast corners touch the side of the heart, I have not used the E4 tool for an oval here or the 1.5 to make the dots on either side. Instead, I've just used the one starting at the edge of the heart to make the two walk dots along the sides. Back to the E4 again. I want to make a set of ovals on this third main pink swooshes. I'll do the same here as with the other ones and place a dot on either side of the E4 oval. We'll go back to the 1.5 to do a series of locked dots down the side of the large swooshes. Now, I find locking dots with the 1.5 tool to be easy enough and I don't need to switch tools at this time. However, you may want or need to depending on what tools you actually have available. For the swooshes on the east and west side of the compass, repeat the process from the set below. Only use the 1.5 tool to walk dots along the side of the swoosh, starting at the edge of the heart. I 
decided to take the one tool and make another set of block dots with the smaller orange swooshes as well to create a kind of crown over them. Now I've skipped over a bit of the time lapse here to let the paint dry a little so we could start to top dot. Now do not try to do this while your paint is still wet. They will not come out properly. So I've chosen the rose gold from Deco Arts Dazzling Metallics and a pure silver from Craftsmart to accent this with. This is now this is based more on your own personal preference. I typically use a tool that is 0.5 to 1 smaller than the original dot when placing the one on the top. Simply work your way around the piece, adding in either dots or swooshes wherever you find enough room. Like here, your dots do not have to be centered. I often do place the top dots on the bottom side of the one below it. This is easier for beginners because a lot of times it takes the pressure off of having to find that perfect center. And if you don't make the perfect center, this prevents your piece from looking a little wonky if that gets messed up. Now feel free to use either lighter or darker shades of your original color. Go for a metallics or pearl paints to give that a nice shine or even completely contrasting colors to bring a different kind of depth to the piece. This is really where you can just have a lot of fun. And that's it. We're done. So at this point, you do want to make sure that you let your paint dry for at least an hour, if not more. Then take an eraser and remove all the inside grid lines if you've actually made them. Now you can decide at this point if you want to paint or dot or draw the outside edge of the heart, or if you just want to leave it as is. I hope you've enjoyed this Valentine's card dot alone. Thank you so much for watching.